Okay guys, so today we're going to go over imaginary and complex numbers and this. Um, so we're going to learn how to calculate any power of i because we're going to know that the square root of negative 1 is i. That's what we're doing. equations with real coefficients that have complex solutions. So you can see in the graph of f of x equals uh, x squared plus 1 that um, it has no real zero. So let me scroll up a little bit so you guys can see that. So y'all see this graph? See how it doesn't have any x-intercepts? It does not intercept the x-axis at any point. So it is, um, and we're going to put zero here because that's how we solve for the zeros of our function. Those are where y would equal zero. That's the x-intercepts, right? So this would be negative one equals x squared. So if we were to take square root of both of these sides, then we would see that we have the square root of negative one. Well, we cannot, if you put the square root of negative one in your calculator, you're gonna get an error message. So the reason the imaginary number was created was so that it could express a problem like this where it actually doesn't have any um, y-intercepts, okay? I mean, sorry, x-intercepts. So an imaginary number is the square root of a negative number. Imaginary numbers can be written in the form bi, where I, b is the real number and i is the imaginary unit. So the square of an imaginary number is a, the original negative number. So in this case, with the first one, the square root of negative 1 is i. Now when we take the square root of negative 2, we're going to actually just factor it. So we're going to do the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 2, which would be i square root of 2 when we do the square root of negative four. Again, gonna factor out that negative one, and we know that the square root of four is two, right? So this is going to be two i. We are just simplifying now, so we don't have to put the plus or minus in front of it, okay? So here, when we square a square root, remember that these two cancel each other out, and we just get the negative one. So on this next set of problems, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify. So we're going to do the 5 on the outside. We're going to take, again, we're going to factor out that negative 1. So now we're going to um, say 5 times i, because that is our square root of negative 1, right? And then hopefully all of y'all know that the square root of 121 is 11. So we're going to multiply all three of these together. We're going to get 55 i. Okay, on this next one, we have a negative out front, so we're going to leave that negative out front, and it's going to affect our ultimate answer. So again, we're going to factor this thing. So we're going to factor out that negative 1. Now, I know that 6 is a factor of 96. I just remember it. We did this last week, so I'm going to go, and when I put 6 into 96, I get 16 and 6, right? So once again, we know that this is negative 1, right, times i times 4 square root of 6. So we're, our answer is going to be negative, so it's going to be minus 4i square root of 6. So if it starts negative, it's going to end negative. If it starts positive, it's going to end positive. If the problem says to simplify. So on these next three, again, I want you to simplify these terms, okay? Uh, pause the video, go ahead and do them, and then come back to me. All right, so now we're going to again factor this out. Negative 1, I know that 4 is a factor of 12, and that's a perfect square, and 3. So this is going to be i, this is going to be 2, and this is going to be the square root of 3. So once again, we're going to say our answer is 2i square root of 3. The next one, we're going to multiply 2 times whatever we get. And again, I'm going to do the minus 1, factor it out, and the square root of 36. So this is going to be 2 times i times 6. So that's going to be 12i. And again, remember, the reason there's no plus or minus out in front of these is because these problems are telling us to simplify, okay? So this one's minus 1 third. Again, going to factor out that negative 1. 
I'm to factor of 63. 9 times 7 is 63, so that's what I'm going to do. So I got minus 1 third. I've got my i. This is a 3 and the square root of 7. So I want to help you all out here. So I'm going to do the negative 1 third times the 3 over 1 because that's what 3 is. So I'm going to multiply it by i and the square root of 7. So this is going to be negative 3 over 3, right, y'all? Which is what? Negative 1, okay? Still times i, square root of 7. So my final answer is going to be negative i square root of 7 because negative 3 over 3 is negative 1, right? And when I multiply negative 1 times i, I get negative i. Okay, on this next set of problems, it says to solve um, the equation. Okay, so this is a little bit different. So we are going to use the plus or minus this time. So we're going to take square root of both sides. That's going to give me x equals plus or minus. Again, we're going to do the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 144. Hopefully, again, you remember that the square root of 144 is 12. So x is equal to plus or minus 12i. When we check this, I'm going to actually do both parts. So plus or minus 12. When I square that, I get 144 because negative 12 times negative 12 is still 144. Um, and when I do the i squared, recall that i squared is the square root of negative 1 squared, right? So that's negative 1. When I multiply the negative 1 times the 144, don't I get negative 144, y'all? That's how we check it. All right, let's do this other one. So first step here is we're going to subtract 90. So we're going to get 5x squared equals negative 90. Then we're going to divide both sides by 5, trying to get the x by itself. That's going to give us x squared equals negative 18. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides, right? So that's going to be x equals plus or minus. Don't forget that. Square root of negative 1. I just so happen to know that 9 is a factor of 18. It's a perfect square, right? Okay, so this is going to give us x equals plus or minus 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Square root of negative 1 is i. So this is going to be 3i. Square root of 2. Now I'm going to show you all how to check this one. Again, I'm going to break it up into parts. So I'm going to do the plus or minus 3 squared, that's going to give me 9, right? Because again, negative 3 times negative 3 is still positive 9. When I do the i squared, I get negative 1. And when I do the square root of 2 squared, remember, these two parts cancel each other out, so we get a 2. So what is 9 times negative 1 times 2? That's negative 18. Now we're going to plug that negative 18 in right here for this x, okay? So we're going to do 5 times negative 18 plus 90. We're trying to see, does that equal 0? Well, 5 times negative 18 is negative 90. So negative 90 plus 90 is indeed 0. Okay? So once you guys do the next three prop or the next, let me see how many problems. Yeah, yeah the next three problems, and then come back to me when you're done. Okay, now I'm going to work these problems for you. These are the U tries 2A, 2B, and 2C. Okay? So again, I'm going to take the square root here and the square root here. It's going to be x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 36. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 36 is 6, so this is 6i. Again, if we square this, we're going to get 36i squared, and that would be i squared is equal to negative 1, right? Okay, so that's our first one. Our next one, we got to move the 48, so I'm going to do that first. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So it's going to give me x equals plus or minus. Remember, when we're solving, we're going to use the plus or minus. The square root of negative 1. Um, and I remember that 16 times 3 is 48. You might not, and you might have to factor this, but um, I actually remember that. So here we go again. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of negative 1 is i. So if we were to square all this again, we're going to get 16 squared. I mean, 4 squared is 16. i squared is negative 1. And if we square the square root of 3, we're going to get 16 times 3. 
times a negative 1 is negative 48. This one we're going to move over the 25 first. Then we're going to divide both sides by the 9. So we get x squared equals negative 25 over 9. And we're going to take the square root of both of these, okay? So here again, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 25. Remember, we can break this up over the square root of 9. So x equals plus or minus. Hopefully by now you know if there's a negative underneath that radical, we've got the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25 over the square root of 9, right? So this is x equals plus or minus 5i over 3. Okay, so we're going to go over this table here. Um, the imaginary unit i can be raised to higher powers. Um, so we're going to complete this table. So anything to the 0 power, i to the 0 power is 1, right? We should all know that. So that's just 1. And remember that when we have i to the first, isn't that the square root of negative 1? So that is equal to i, because i to the first is just equal to i, okay? Now when we do the i squared, this is what we're really talking about. We're talking about i to the negative 1 squared, right? So what happens here? The square root cancels out the square, right? Or vice versa. So we just get negative 1. Then when we're talking about i to the third, I just do i squared times i, right? Because that is i to the third. So what does that really mean? What was i squared, y'all? Negative 1, and we multiply that times i, we get negative i, don't we? Okay. And when we get to the fourth one, it starts repeating, okay? So here we're going to do i to the second times i to the second. Because isn't that negative 1 times negative 1, y'all? And that's a positive 1. So as we scroll down here and we read the rest of it, it says if you were to continue this table, what is the pattern? So if we were to look back up here at our pattern, we have 1, comma, i, negative 1. Sorry, I said that wrong. Yeah, no, 1, i, negative 1, and negative i. That's what it is. That's our pattern, okay? So then we're going to learn about this thing called the quarter method, okay? This is an easy way for you guys to solve the problem. So when you're asked to simplify i of a higher degree, since the answer can only be one of four options, you can divide the exponent by four using your calculator. Then you can look at the remainder, or the cents is what I like to say. So if the remainder is 25 cents and you have one quarter, it goes that it, it goes into one. So basically you have one quarter, it's, it's i to the first. If it was 50 cents, you would have i to the second. If it was 75 cents, you'd have i to the third. So we're going to talk about how this works on the next slide. So this is what we call the quarter method, y'all. So um, the way the quarter method works, I'm going to give you guys some examples here. So <clears throat> we're talking about how many cents, and I'm going to call it that because you guys, it makes more sense to y'all's brains, okay? So let's just say I have um, i to the 12, okay? So if I divide 12 by 4, what do I get? I get 3.00, right? So if it was i to the 12th and I divide that exponent by 4, I get no change, right? So that's an i to the 0, which means it's going to be 1. So this is i to the 0, which equals 1, okay? Now let's talk about the next one. So if I was to do i to the 13 divided by 4, that would equal 3.25. So see that 25 cents right there? That matches that 25 cents. So this is an i to the first. Got it? Which is just i. Okay? Then when we talk about i to the 14 divided by 4. So if I divide 14 by 4, I get $3.50, right? 50 cents is equal to 2 quarters, right? So I got i to the second. If you recall, when we talked about i to the second, isn't that the square root of negative 1 squared? Which is equal to negative 1, okay? Then um, if we keep going, so we're going to do i to the 15 divided by 4. That's equal to $3.75. Again, we're only concerned about that 75 cents right there. See that? So that's going to be 3 quarters, right? So that's i to the third. And if y'all recall, when I showed you this, I did i to the second, which was negative 1 times i. So this is negative i.
Now remember, it just keeps repeating itself, right? So if I get i to the zero, that's no quarters. If I get i, I mean, I'm sorry, if I, yeah. Um, if I get no change, zero, zero, then it's i to the zero. 25 cents, i to the first. 50 cents, i to the second. Uh, 75 cents, i to the third. That's how we're going to do this. So now we're going to do a couple. Okay, so I'm going to take this 99 and I'm going to divide by 4. When I divide 99 by 4, I got 24.75. Remember, I'm only concerned about that 75 right there. That's 3 quarters, right? So that's i to the third. And if you recall, i to the third is equal to negative i. Okay, once again, we're going to divide the 17 by 4. When we divide 17 by 4, we get 4.25. We're only concerned about the change. 25 cents is 1 quarter, right? So that's i to the first, which is simply i. Third one, divide it by 4. That means we get 30, right, y'all? With no change. So that's i to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is... One. Now, the difference with this one is we got a 4 out front, so we have to multiply that 1 times the 4. So we're going to get 4. Okay? Then we got 64,002. Again, divide that by 4. I got 16,000.5. Again, only concerned about that 50 cents. That's i to the second, right? Do you remember what i to the second was? It's negative 1. So again, we got the negative 1 and we got to multiply it times this 1 fourth out here. So times 1 fourth, that equals negative 1 fourth. All right, let's see if you guys can do the last four problems and then come back to me when you're done. Okay, so here's our last four. So again, dividing 14 by 4, I got 3.5. Again, we're only concerned with that 50 cents. So that's i to the second, which is equal to, hopefully you remember, negative 1 because that's the square root of negative 1 squared, right? Then we've got 63 divided by 4. I got 15.75. We're concerned about that 75 cents, so that's i to the third. Hopefully you remember that's i to the second, which is negative 1 times i. So that's negative i. The next one we have this 1 half. Don't forget that because we're going to have to multiply that by what we get ultimately. Divide the 7 by the 4. I got 1.75. Again, only concerned with that 75 cents. So this is an i to the third, which is a negative i, but we got to multiply that by 1 half. So when we do that, we get negative 1 half i. Okay, the last one. Divide that 42 by 4. When I did that, I got 10.5. That's 50 cents, right, y'all? So that's i to the second. We know that i to the second, hopefully by now, is negative 1. So we've got to multiply that negative 1 times that negative 6. Right? So that's going to be positive 6.